Well, today is the first oil change on the C6 Corvette. Uh, we got the front end up in the air. I'm thinking about jacking up in the rear, but because there's two, because there's two drain locations on the Corvette, uh, one forward location there, and then one here next to the filter. Um, normally I want the rear end up so it would tilt the uh, oil pan forward so we can get it to drain out the front but i think if as long as it's higher on the passenger side it'll drain toward this uh, plug here and we'll get we'll get all of the uh, a vast vast majority of the oil out so i think we're okay like this open the hood and we will oh, it'll stay open open the fill cap relieve some of the pressure allows it to flow out of the car a little bit better. Removal tools are always helpful. Oh, she's. <laughs> oh. Now, this is the GS, so we have Ten and a half quarts going in here. The dry sump setup. Uh, we're going with Mobile One 5W30 because that's what's recommended. However, I hear and see things on the in the groups and on the forum saying now it's supposed to be some other oil and it's supposed to be zero W40. So I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments. You guys are up to date with your LS3 engines and what engine oil is best. But for now, we're putting what is on the cap in the car. Uh, Ten quarts up here and then we let it run to get to 175 degrees ish uh, and then let it cool down for about five or ten minutes or so and then check the level and we should add another half a quarter or so and we'll be good to go several minutes now until it gets to 175. We got a little ways to go. Uh, I want to do cam headers tune in this thing, maybe a couple more things right away. I want to jump into it and start, you know, move quickly with some of the modifications. 
Um, and then I was starting to hear this tick, which I didn't notice. I drove it a couple of times and I listened to it run for several minutes on two different occasions at the dealership before picking it up. Uh, and didn't notice it but once I got it home. I started hearing this little chirping noise. Uh, so I started getting scared. But. I don't know, it still sounds a little funny. I'm not L used to LS engines yet, so if you guys can hear anything here. Sounds way quieter than the, the VQ engines do, that's for sure. But anyway, I wanted to, before I really got crazy and started doing things, uh, worrying about lifters, I wanted to get the oil change, get some nice fresh oil in there and see if that made a difference. And, Right off the rip, it seems to have. So that's good news. Good news. Did the high fours, so the wheel would be great for now. But this is a this is going to be a good project for the channel. So I'm excited to see what kind of horsepower we can get out of it. But anyway, let's continue to warm this thing up for uh, a few more minutes. 175. And we'll let her sit. Let's take a look. See where we're at. Sixty. We're at 170 right now, so I'll just give it to uh, a little tick passer. In exactly 10 minutes. Just gonna wipe the old off. to see we're right in this in the uh, center of the hash we could add a touch more but we're right up into the hash already so so some people like to do max fill on their oil fills or the oil changes they go all the way up to the top of that hashed marking on the dipstick uh, but the reality is you don't have to. So I think another half a quart would get us up to that point or maybe still be within uh, the hash mark. But uh, we might just uh, add just a touch more here uh, just to uh, make sure we sort of get to the capacity. But the oil looks clean. The engine's sounding smoother. Uh, I don't want to say that this oil change, this first Corvette oil change, kicked my ass, but I certainly wasn't prepared. It is a lot different than what I'm used to for Fords and Jeeps and the VQ engines that I've been working on for uh, the Q50 and the 350Z, but uh, it, not all that different. It just, it's so much lower. Um, you have different jacking points that you have to think about. You know, there's no real pinch weld. Uh, it's hard to get the jack underneath the car. So uh, it holds a, a massive quantity of oil, at least the 2010 Grand Sport does at 10 and a half quarts. Um, so make sure you have a large, oil drain pan, uh, low profile jack would be helpful or some uh, low profile ramps, which I don't have. I couldn't use my ramps because they're too tall. Um, it's just a, a few extra things that you need to uh, be prepared for in order to take care of this uh, oil change on this car. And I just, I, you know, I just was kind of winging it. And unfortunately, uh, my oil pan uh, filled up faster than it could drain down into it. Uh, I got my hands a little too oily under the car, dropped the oil filter into the pan, and then it rolled out. So we got oil on the floor. It just, it, it's one of those things where things start to snowball. So uh, easy job if you take your time and you go into it prepared. Uh, but if you just sort of wing it, there might be some points of frustration. Uh, but. Here we go. So more stuff coming for the uh, Corvette that I'm excited about. Like I said, we're trying to make some power right away with it. Uh, get the thing sounding really good and looking really good, of course. So uh, some cosmetics things, some maintenance things that we always got to take care of. Want to uh, take care of the brakes, probably do some a more aggressive brake pad. Might want to paint the calipers, you know, add the speed culture touch to those. Um, uh, just, there's some stuff coming up, so stick around. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, watching my struggles here on the first oil change. Uh, but more to come for the channel, more to come for all the cars involved. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. See you in the next one.